If you've ever had your bike stolen, you'll know just how heartbreaking it can be. In fact, statistics show that bike theft is in the top three reasons stopping people from cycling to work. There is a financial impact to people on, from bike theft, but there are other impacts as well. That might be somebody's only way of getting to and from work. As part of the City of London Police's crime prevention strategy, they've teamed up with industry experts Have Bike to carry out a bike lock test and to promote standards of best practice when leaving your bike unattended. In order to do that, we need a thief. Here's Darren. So what is the most common type of bike theft? The easiest bike theft for me is to use a pair of cutters like this. I can show you how quick that is. That was about three locks in about three seconds. Yep, and it's amazing how much money people will leave attached to cable like that. So what would be the next step up from the cable locks? Next step, the D locks, they come in very in quality and size. Slightly bigger tool for the job. It looked like you were slightly struggling there, but it did actually only take you four seconds with those bolt poppers to get through that U-lock. We do always have these, which is probably half the time. But would people actually be seen walking around with a massive pair of bolt croppers like that? Yep, surprisingly, these are used very regular. Well, that was a pretty cheap U-lock that you've just broken into there, and now we've got this bling, shiny, hefty-looking chain. So surely that's going to take a lot longer to get into. This is a good quality, toughened chain but I don't think it's going to take very long. Probably best to stand back just a touch. This generally will be cut twice. No, there you have it, 11 seconds. OK, so now we're going to move on to our sold secure gold-rated locks for bicycles. Are you going to give it a go with these bolt croppers? Yeah, we'll try it with the bolt croppers. I don't think that one's going to work. This is our last option. All right, I mean, that was pretty extreme. Do people actually walk around <laughs> with these angle grinders? Yeah, again, they can be hidden quite well, they're quite small, compact, and they are used in the middle of the day. Really, with people walking around? Yep, who's going to stop me with one of these? <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't go near anybody with one of those. anything that you can do to help protect your bike against even angle grinders? The main thing you can do is not put your lock onto the top tube of the bike. Always put it through the back wheel and the frame. Make sure you fill as much of this D as you can. By having it down here, it increases the time quite significantly on, on actually using the angle grinder. And it rules out the bolt croppers and any other methods used. Two locks always better than one. If you can get the front wheel and the frame in at the front and the back wheel, so fill up as much space as you can. It makes them pretty much passable by the bike feet, so you're not going to want to touch it. Our advice would be to buy a sold secure gold standard lock. Avoid cable locks and avoid cheap D locks because you aren't providing any protection really for your bike. The advice that I give everybody who's got a bike and who's going to be leaving it anywhere is to have it marked with a company like Bike Register who put a permanent mark on the bike and then it's registered on a national database so that if your bike is found at a later date it can be reunited with its owner. So the conclusion is 
Don't buy cheap cable locks. Spend the money and get a decent, gold-rated, sold-secured D-lock. These can resist the bolt croppers. You can break into them using angle grinders, but that is a strong deterrent to any bike thief.